In Florida's 13th uh, congressional district, we had a special election to elect um, a, a congressional uh, representative there. And that's because Bill Young had passed away. Now, he's a Republican and had held that seat for a long time. But uh, this district had voted for President Obama twice. So it's a purple district. It could go either way. Now, Alex Sink, who was the Democratic candidate, uh, had uh, significant advantages. First of all, she outspent uh, the Republican in the race four to one. Wow. She was handpicked by Democratic leaders. People are counting that as an advantage. I'm going to put that in the disadvantage column in a second. Um, in fact, uh, the majority whip Kevin McCarthy for the Republicans said that she was, quote, the ideal candidate. She had run for statewide office before and barely lost to Rick Scott, who, of course, is now the governor of Florida. I'll get back to that in a second as well. And then the person she was running against was a disaster. He's a Republican lobbyist, literally. That was his job. In fact, let me uh, quote Mediate here. Jolly, a 41-year-old lobbyist and a Washington insider in the midst of a divorce, who's presently dating a 27-year-old former co-worker of Jolly's, represented the perfect candidate from a Democratic perspective. In theory, he should have been easily framed, polarized, and made toxic. It did not turn out that way. Now, Noah Rothman's right. The ideal Democratic candidate lost to a Republican lobbyist by about two points. Now, a lot of the polls had her up by nine points. Uh, I did not believe that. And they have a theory, and I have a theory. They is the right wing. And by the way, most of the mainstream media today say, oh, you see, this turns out to be a referendum on Obamacare. She was in favor of keeping Obamacare and didn't want to go back to the status quo. Jolly was in favor of repealing Obamacare. So there you have it, all the Democrats, you must now immediately run for the hills. Don't ever support or defend Obamacare again. Here's my counter theory. Alex Sink is the worst politician in America. Now, I don't say that because, oh, she lost and handsome. No, no, I said that before the election, and I've been saying that for years. This is the same person who lost to Rick Scott. Rick Scott, whose company, when he was CEO, committed the largest Medicare fraud in American history. How do you lose to that guy? How do you lose to the biggest scam artist in the country, the guy who claims to be a fiscal conservative and robbed the American people so much they had to pay a fine over a billion dollars. How do you lose to that guy? You lose to that guy by being the worst politician I have ever seen. And now she goes and loses to a Republican lobbyist going around with this 27-year-old girlfriend saying, yeah, I'm gonna work for corporations all over America. Elect me. How do you lose to that guy? But I said she was going to lose. Uh, man, I wish I was, I've talked about it internally here. I wish I was on the record on it here. I didn't think it was an important enough race to talk about on the air. But Alex Sink, I have said a thousand times on this show. So why are they running her? Why are they running her? And look, you got to understand, I have no personal animus towards Alex Sink. I couldn't care about less about her. And I'm sure she's a lovely lady. And if I met her in person, I'd feel bad about criticizing her this much. But stop running her for any goddamn race. My dog could have beat Rick Scott. Charlie Chris, who's had been a Republican, a Democrat, an independent, who's been all over the board, who's not an ideal candidate, is kicking Rick Scott's ass right now. Anybody could have beat Rick Scott. Anybody could have beat this jolly guy, except Alex Sink. That's the theory that's correct in this case. Now look, how Obamacare plays out is a good and important question. And I don't think we have a definitive answer to that one way or another. But this race wasn't about that. This about Democrats, as always, picking a loser candidate. Now, why? Why? Alex Sink uh, said that we should not repeal Obamacare. Wow, is she not merciful? And that we shouldn't go back to the status quo. But the quote, the ACA rollout, was a disaster. G great, criticize your own party, criticize the president on the one thing he got half right at least. And, and that's a winning strategy, hit, punching yourself in the face. That's a great, that's what was the focus of our campaign. Oh, the Democrats, the rollout was a disaster. <laughs> I'm an idiot, vote for me, okay, but I'm not gonna repeal it. What kind of a campaign is that? You know what she said on this issue? Quote, the president has failed us. Which party are you in? Which, when you get self-loathing Democrats to run, handpicked by the self-loathing Democratic leadership who think that the right wing is right about everything, and you run that candidate, big shock, news flash, you wind up losing. 
So now, of course, what's happening? Oh, the Republicans love it. They're absolutely jolly over it. Okay, let me start with Jolly himself. This is him after the election. I think my new colleague, Nancy Pelosi, might be engaging in some spin control this evening. <laughs> I, I, will, I will tell you this. I, Megan, I will tell you this. We can't draw a mandate from this race. This was a very closely uh, run race, and I don't know the final percentages, but uh, this was not an overwhelming victory. What is important, though, uh, is that a Republican in a district that President Obama had won twice, a first-time candidate going up against a hand-picked candidate from out of town, picked by the National Party, the National Democrats, with all of the money behind her from the very beginning. They were wrong with their message. They are wrong on the issues. The reason we won this race is because we stood on issues and for a message that is right for our community and right for the future of our country. What was your message? That you're pro-lobbyist? <laughs> that you want to go back to a point where we can get uh, you know, remove for not be able to get insurance because of pre-existing conditions. Go back to 30 million uh, Americans without health care and no plan for fixing that. And what a positive message did you have? More tax cuts for the rich, more wars. What positive message did you have? No, the problem was the other side spent their whole time saying, oh, no, no, you're right, you're right. Obamacare sucks, it sucks, it sucks. But it's slightly better than going back to the status quo. Well, I mean, why, how can you, look, that's why we're independents. How can you support Democrats? I mean, it's like, how do you give money to Alex Singh? How do you give money to the Democratic Party? Be like, go get him. Tell us how you suck just a little worse than Republicans. Now, of course, Fox News loves this. And they're going to declare all sorts of, uh, you know, mission accomplished and Obamacare is the worst and make sure no one ever supports it again. In a district that's 50-50 Democrat and Republican, it was really a tough race and a great barometer to see what could be taking place on 2014. And even though he was trailing by as many as six points with a week to go, the Republican, not very well known, Dave Jolly, has defeated uh, uh, Alex Sink, known, just ran for statewide office, 49% yeah. to 47%, and this sends tremors through the, through the uh, political process. Um, and it was seen as a, really a referendum on Obamacare, though Debbie Wasserman Schultz came out almost re immediately after the, uh, after the special election and said, look, we're very proud of, uh, of Alex in, in the race that she ran. He, David Jolly ran on a platform that said Obamacare was bad, and she didn't vote for it, of course, but she supports it. I would not be for these big government programs, and that seemed to resonate. Paul Begala, I think, had the best point when he saw everybody spinning in the Democrats pretending like it wasn't a big deal. He says, no, don't pretend like it's not a big deal. This is a wake-up call. Right. We, have to, we, meaning Democrats, have to redouble their efforts, or 2014, they're not only going to not win the House, they're going to lose the Senate. <laughs> So now you think Democrats won't listen to Fox News? If you think that you haven't been paying attention to American politics, Democrats will take their marching orders from Fox News and go, you're right, let's run for the hills. I no longer support Obamacare. I don't want to run the election on that. I concede. When in fact, the real problem was that she conceded too much and she lost an eminently winnable seat because she kept talking about how disastrous her own party was. But the Democrats will learn the exact lesson that Fox News is talking about because they're a bunch of losers. Now, finally, we go to Joe Scarborough, who's going to reinforce this whole idea, oh, Obamacare, Obamacare is terrible. But at the end, he says something that's actually surprisingly true. Listen. I don't know that Obamacare is the, uh, is, is everything in this case. And that's, mm. what Republic, that's what a lot of Republicans in Florida think. I've got to say, that's yeah. what, I, that's what I think. Uh, I, I, I think it is. I think, that, I think 2010, an off-year election history shows Obamacare sunk Democrats in 2010. I think we may have something historic here happening where you have one act actually causing grave damage to a political party, two midterms in a row. And, you know, Mika, I personally believe Alex Sink's consultants that had her stand in front of the camera that says fix the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's a horrible mistake. I said it yesterday. You don't fight on enemy terrain. And she tried to fight on enemy terrain, defending this act that no Democrats have tried to defend over the past four years. They just don't do it because you can't do it on the campaign trail if you, unless you like losing. He's right about that. I mean, unlike you like, unless you like losing, uh, you go on enemy terrain. She went on enemy terrain and then she didn't fight fully. She came in and said, the enemy is largely right. Please vote for me anyway. 
all work consultants should never be hired again. Instead, they'll do what one of the commentators said there. Oh, well, she ran for statewide office, and she ran here, and she was close both times to miserable opponents, so they'll probably run her again.